Good morning. This morning I'm inspired to share a very powerful story and experience that happened to me a number of years ago when I was studying metaphysical healing and transpersonal psychology at the mystery school that I went to called Delphi. And what we were studying was past life regression. And um, in order to learn how to facilitate past life regression, we had to first uh, have performed a past life regression on us. And past life regression is a really interesting modality in that it's not even necessary for you to believe in past lives in order to get great benefit from it. If you have that, I'm a very, very scientifically minded as well as spiritually minded, so it's a pretty good marriage of both, and I really can see things from both perspectives. And from a scientifically minded standpoint or just a psychologically minded standpoint, past life regression really allows us to access our unconscious mind or a part of the mind that we're not normally aware of. And in that unconscious mind, we the mind gives us, per, through you know, asking, gives us projections into stories and symbols and visions and places and people and things that represent certain aspects of consciousness within us. Right? And so it's really irrelevant whether or not it's an actual past life or if that really happened or if I'm if I need to like you know check it and verify it and try to prove it and all of that. You know, um, when I do past life regressions or when I've done them in the past, I really encourage my clients to understand that whatever it is that comes up, it's a projection of something that is alive, still alive, still very real and alive inside of you. And if we can take the story that comes out and dissect the story and investigate it and pull out the themes and pull out the lessons and pull out the um, the reasons and, and the feelings of what's happening, then we actually have something to work with that could really affect who we are, who you are today, and um, the way that you see yourself and the way that you you show up in your life and in your relationships. So um, my past life regression story was um, actually going to another planet. And in a lot of the spiritual work that I do, a lot of uh, New Agers out there um, connect with what we call star beings or ultra-dimensional entities that are beyond our third dimensional time and space reality and that are literally um, connected with other star systems in our galaxy like Andromeda, Sirius, and the Pleiades. And I began having communion or connection with the projections or reflections of these ultra-dimensional entities when I was um, very young, and especially after I started doing energy healing and Reiki training. And so when we were in our past life regression class, the teacher asked us to have an intention of what we would like more information on or clarity on or realization on uh, in, our, in our current lives as we go into this uh, past life story or this past life memory. And, you know, some people ask, like, why am I in love with my husband so much? Or why do I fight with my kids incessantly? Um, my question was, why, if, it's, if it's really true that we choose to come here, right? And, and that's a very common New Age uh, philosophy and belief that we choose to come here. We choose to incarnate. We choose our parents. We choose everything. We choose to come into this human existence and human experience. And my question was, if that is really true, because at that point, it was just something that I was told. It wasn't something that I viscerally had experienced and, and known to be true in myself. And so I questioned it. If it's really true, then why do I have this feeling inside of me that I don't belong? Why do I have this feeling inside of me that I don't want to be here, that I don't um, belong to my family, that I don't belong to this society, that I don't belong to this earth? And, um, you know, I was, I was about 18 or 19 when I was in this school, and so I was very much grappling with becoming an adult and what kind of adult was I going to be, um, especially because I, I really felt like I didn't fit in with um, society and with our culture and, and with the pressures and things that were expected of me. I really just didn't want to do it at all. So I went into this past life memory with that intention in mind. And what happened was really miraculous. You know, I was immediately taken through a wormhole of light, and I'm, I'm very visual and, and psychic and things like that. So I have um, almost psychedelic quality uh, inner visions um, very, very often. And so at this time, 
I was taken through a, a column of light and then into a wormhole. And then I, I came out of the wormhole and I was standing in this very tall, uh, translucent blue body that was I, it, almost androgynous, but maybe just slightly male. Um, the genital regions were very different, not like what we have. Um, here it was very a very just slight inclination into one gender or the other um, and we could we could move back and forth if we wanted to experience a little bit more of a female you know experience we could do that or a little bit more of a male and you could move back and forth <clears throat> so I prefer to have a little bit more of a male inclination when I was there and the scenes were <clears throat> really indescribable. I mean, there were colors that were, it was like a, being in a watercolor painting and just colors that I don't even know how to, de how to describe the greens and the blues and the hues. And it was like, there was overtones and it was almost like the colors of the objects were singing and they were singing out to us. Everything was energy and vibration and, and moving and, and these patterns of colors and patterns of of geometry and it was just all around all the time and it was beautiful waterfalls and and trees and um, and all kinds of just stunning natural beauty and I remembered uh, in my in my experience I was a teacher of young young beings and um, and that I actually viscerally knew that I was in the system of the Pleiades that I was a Palladian being um, in this and I, we would go up, I would go up to these trees and pick off these fruits and turn my long slender fingers, long slender hands in this fruit and it would break apart and the children would come up and, and eat the succulent fruit out of it. And, you know, it was just a very visceral knowing that the way that I was teaching and the way that we learned and as a society was through play and fun always always through play and through fun and through inquisitiveness and curiosity and and this this passionate way of just learning whatever we could and expanding and however we could and thinking oh wouldn't that be fun isn't that fun um, we also were very highly consciously advanced so um, most of the communication was telepathic it was an immediate uh, transference of thought um, but we would still speak and really we were speaking just for the fun of making sound and for the fun of hearing sound and making music and singing and and playing and we and, and the actual um, the power of our thought was so powerful that we could literally manifest right out of thought um, through crystalline frequencies and we could create objects um, or really create anything that we wanted and so we would sometimes sing different objects or seeing things into existence as well because the sound frequencies were so um, high and in that dimensional paradigm they were able to <clears throat> it was they're literally able to accelerate the ability from for sound waves and thought waves to become matter um, so that was also some fun stuff that I would do with the with the kids and we lived in these very large crystal uh, palaces so to speak and there were just you know large crystal community buildings and I remember you could go inside and the crystal energy was so strong that it would actually shift the gravitational uh, pull which wasn't very much anyhow and we could literally float up through the many different layers um, of the building and everyone had all the adults had their own quarters um, they lived alone <clears throat> very and no one had any possessions uh, the idea of owning something uh, does not exist there. It's very foreign. Also the idea of fear um, doesn't exist there and it's very foreign too. Um, and the idea of relationship does not exist there. We were one community organism, one community relationship. So there, you know, we, we would have sexual relationships or there was obviously things that were happening to allow these children to come through but there never was, you're my person, I'm your person, we're a family unit, this is my kid, this is our child. Um, when children would come through, they were the, no matter whom they came through, they were the children of the entire community. And they were all they treated the same by every single person in the community. And we would have multiple connections um, with multiple different beings at any given time. And it was really just about sharing love and sharing authentic connection. Um, because there was nothing, no pain to work out, no fear to work out, no karma to work out really, so there was no reason to um, tie ourselves to just one other being. So that was another interesting 
um, memory that came through. And so these are the things that I, I began in the vision to begin to realize that of why I felt different here in this human body and in this human culture and this human life because these principles and some of these ways of being felt very, very natural to me. I mean, I was just weeping in the vision because of I had never at that point in my life known any people that believed that way or that were living that way or had even had that kind of experience at all. And it began to be totally clear to me that this was part of the reason why I felt so alienated um, growing up uh, and what felt completely natural to me and my love's and soul's expression. So one day I was called telepathically into the hall of the elders and we had three elders and they were they looked just like we did. We also never aged at all. It was um, beyond aging so we could literally be in this existence for as long as we wanted and we had the ability to travel to other star systems and to other ways of beings and to other playing with matter in different ways um, but there was no real timeline um, in this existence. So we were called into the, I was called into the elders chamber and I walked in and there was a rectangle, a rectangle uh, sitting at, at the end of the room and the uh, head elder called me over, he was also a little bit slightly male, and he called me over and I peered down into the rectangle on the floor and I, I was peering down into space. And I was seeing stars and galaxies and planetary systems and everything. And he placed his hand on my shoulder. And as soon as he did, there was a transference of energy. And in my vision, looking down into space, it zoomed in on our solar system and on the Earth. And the Earth was just beginning to form. Right? It looked very volcanic and smoky. And it was just, but I could see the, the beauty of the spirit of the earth um, beginning to blossom and really being born as like a, a newborn infant. And as soon as I saw the earth, there was this wonder and awe that came over me like, <gasps> like oh, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And in the transference, it like, there was no time, right? So I got the entire existence of the earth in a moment from the birth of the earth from when just clumps of matter were coming together and forming and chemical processes were happening and, and all of that all the way through until the very end of the earth's existence um, when our sun actually um, implodes and incinerates the earth um, which is who knows thousands of years from now or millions of years from now um, but I saw the entire thing and of the entire earth's history there was like a teeny little blip of space that was the existence of human beings and I felt the existence of human beings all the way from the inception or the seeding of humans that there was this um, evolution of life on the planet and then the, through um, otherworldly influences through star being influences there was uh, taken this very primitive um, ape-like being and um, genetically enhancing it in a way and consciously enhancing it in a way that created um, it's kind of like speeded the evolutionary process up, so to speak, and I saw that happening. And then all the way through until um, our species leaves this planet. And um, I don't quite remember what the details were around that or how that happens, but there definitely was a time when uh, human beings uh, were no longer on, on the planet Earth anymore. So in that there, the, also the transference of energy was that the Palladian beings, as as well as some other um, very powerful systems in the in the Great Galactic Federation, Galactic Council, were experimenting with us because what they had not right we had this this play this fun this curiosity of what it would be like to expand our experience and expand our awareness into f the frontier of consciousness and the frontier of experience and for that that really was moving into this third dimensional reality where there's this perception of duality, right? Where there's this experience of pain and fear. And we actually wanted that. We, we were curious about it. We were like, well, how would our being, our fullness, be even expanded m more if we were to take ourselves into these third dimensional beings that seemingly forget who they really are and, and experience this idea of separation and the spectrum of experience became exponentially greater 
than even what we were experiencing there in the Palladian paradigm. And so even though we were in complete utopia and paradise and there was absolute perfection and everything, it occurred to me, it was deeply true in me that there was so much more to be gained and and just for the sake of experience right so much more variety and in that variety there was a richness a richness and a beauty unlike that i had um, ever conceived of before and so the elder asked me would you go and represent our consciousness would you go and represent the fullness that we are in this palladian system as a human being over countless lifetimes, many, many, many lifetimes where it's all happening now and it's all truly already happened. And I remembered viscerally saying yes. And it was a full and complete yes with every single thing, every fiber of my being. Yes, I want that experience. Yes. And yes, I will go. And yes, I will experience the incomplete spectrum of human reality. And yes, I will eventually awaken to the truth of my Palladian ancestry, my, my star ancestry, my divine ancestry of the truth of who I really am. And yes, I will teach and share and, and bring that um, into this world. And so I came out of that memory, I came out of that past life regression completely changed and a new person. And from, from then... Uh, transforming the pain of I don't belong, which is my core wound, and in the life lift work that I do, um, I work, I help people transform that core wound. What is your story of separation? What is your story of alienation? Um, or not everyone feels like they don't belong to the society. Some people feel like they're inherently evil or bad or wrong, or some people feel like they don't matter, or they're not enough, um, or they don't deserve to really express their gifts. So whatever it is for you, we all have different. Um, path that we choose to experience that separation and in the life of work I help people to understand that taking on that perception of separation is absolutely perfect and divine and it's a very integral part of our decision to come here. It's really what we want to experience and through the container that is built in our consciousness for the experiences that we have through that pain we are then able to blossom in our gifts in a full spectrum, really empowered in an amazing way, and to do it in a third dimensional body that really isn't available anywhere else. So um, that's really exciting to me, and if any of you ever do my Life Lift program, then that realization will become completely evident um, to you as well. And so whether you're more of a scientifically minded person, or a spiritually minded person, or a psychic, or, or logical, um, we really can um, create understanding and opportunity no matter how we're coming at it. And that's what I love most about the work that I do is that I can talk about it in, from many different angles and perspectives and in many different um, languages of, uh, of understanding. So thank you for hearing my Palladian memory story and how it is that I helped to transform the feeling of not belonging in, in me and to understand the fullness of life that I've been given here and we've all been given. So I hope today that you could enjoy that and to reflect just a little bit on this idea that you chose to be here. You chose to come into this human body. You chose every single thing that's ever happened to you. You chose your childhood. You chose your parents. You chose your pain. And in that awareness, how does that allow you to be empowered to consciously create the life that you want and to take everything that's happening as an availability and opportunity to align with the truth of who you really are beyond your experiences, beyond your past. Much love.